Hey Wargamers, I'm Mike Cousins and welcome to the Epic Hobby. Today I'm going to be finishing grayscales for my Guildball Fisherman's team. In the previous video I painted this model entirely with black, white, and gray paint to get what is called value painting done where I kind of envision the different tones I want the model to have. Today I'm going to be laying color over those different shades so that I can start to actually get a finished product out of this model. I'm beginning with Gilliman Blue Glaze and Seraphim Sepia Wash. I'm applying the blue glaze in thin coats over his arms, and this is going to allow most of the shading to show through while giving it a blue tint. The idea here is that most of the shadows and highlights are already planned before I start getting color in the model, and effectively what I have is a black and white photograph of the miniature before I start painting color onto it. This is really my first time experimenting with value painting, and as you'll see later in this video, some paint just seems to work better than others for applying color over a shaded base coat. This Gilliman Blue Glaze is almost perfect because it provides a lot of color while still leaving the highlights and shadows underneath showing through, but some other paints have much heavier pigments and tend to hide that underpainting, and that's really not what I want here. If you watched the first video, you'll remember that I was a little bit concerned that the area with the net ended up being a little bit brighter than the rest of the clothing around it, and I was really hoping that by applying a wash a little bit heavier to the net, it would help tone down those areas. So you can see that I'm actually doing that here. I'm really laying the blue on quite heavily over the net, and I'm hoping that it's just going to pool and dry a little bit darker here than it does over the rest of his clothing, and kind of help bring it in line with the rest of the tone. With the blue aspects done, I'm going to start laying the Seraphim Sepia onto his boots. It's not bad and it definitely lets the highlight show through, but it's not quite the shade I'm looking for, so I'm going to revisit it later with a little bit of a darker brown. Here I'm using some Citadel Agrax Earthshade Wash. I'm going to use this now for the darker brown areas. Aside from using this to make the sepia on his boots a little darker, I'm also applying it to a few different areas of his clothing that really I kind of want to be more shadowed and less important. I sort of mentioned this when I was doing the value painting in the first video and I'm just carrying forward with that idea. Here I'm attempting to make a glaze from Vallejo Dwarf Flesh and Vallejo Glaze Medium plus a little bit of water, and you'll see that it doesn't really work the way I want it to. This is what I was talking about when I say some of the colors have heavier pigments, and it just tends to kind of hide the underpainting. This is definitely one of them. You can see as I apply it to his head that it really doesn't tint the undercoat the way I want it to. It might be that I didn't thin it enough, or I needed to use something besides a glaze medium, but ultimately I just didn't get the effect I wanted from this color. Now I'm going to try the same thing with a little bit of Vallejo Somber Grey. I'm going to be using this on the sort of armor-like parts. He has some wristbands and a large shoulder pad on his left shoulder that I just want to paint this color. There's a few random details on his clothing I'm just going to hit with this color as well just to break them up from the monotony of the surrounding colors. Bringing a little bit of extra blue tint even though it's a very grayish blue into his clothing does help kind of tie him to the rest of my fisherman theme. You can see a little bit of the underpainting is showing through, but this paint is still a little bit on the opaque side. I'm going to use some P3 Blood Tracker Brown to bring a much warmer, higher saturation brown into his boots. I just find the color palette between his boots, the rest of his clothing, basically anything that's not blue just isn't really varied enough, so I want to make his boots a little warmer just so that something is a little more distinct. I'm primarily using this on the shadowed side of the boots so that the really bright highlights stay intact. Grayscales also has a couple leather pouches on his chest. I'm just gonna hit them with this color at this time. It's not important that they're very bright because they are sort of in the shadow of his arms and they're right behind the spear. The spear is obviously the much more important detail. Now 
Next, I'm going to paint the net across his back. I'm mostly going to be using Vallejo Earth for this and then highlighting it a little bit later. Painting large Dre's detail like this can be a little bit of a chore because you have to kind of grab the edges as well from every direction. You don't want it to look brown from one side and blue from another. I'm going to skip painting the rest of the net here. You get the idea. Next, I'm going to use a little bit of gray just to base coat all the fish hooks hanging off of his net. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Vallejo khaki, and this is going to be used to highlight the different straps wrapped around the spear, as well as as highlight points on his net. When painting a net like this, you kind of want to focus the highlight at the intersections because in a real net there would be a knot there and it would be a little more prominent than the rest of the surrounding net would be. On a miniature of this scale, that might not really be readily noticeable, but by painting it a little bit lighter color, you kind of give the impression of that knot being there, even if it's not sculpted in. I'm also going to take this opportunity to fix a couple highlights on his boots that just became a little bit dull with the application of all the different colors. Now using a touch of pure white, I'm going to add a couple shiny spots to each of the metal hooks. This is sort of a poor man's non-metallic metal because I'm really only using two colors, but it gets the job done for a really small detail like this. Now I'm going to start working on Grayscale's face, which is easily the trickiest part of this model. To start with, I'm base coating his beard and hair with a darker gray. I'm now mixing a little bit of white in with that gray to produce a mid-tone, which I'll then apply to his beard and hair as well. Now I'm getting ready to paint skin tones, because the wash earlier didn't really give me the effect I wanted. I'm starting off by measuring out a couple even amounts of Vallejo dwarf skin, and then adding increasing amounts of Vallejo pale flesh to it. You can see now I've got four colors. One is straight dwarf flesh, one is half and half dwarf flesh and pale flesh, one is two thirds pale flesh, and the last one is pure pale flesh. The two-thirds pale flesh still wasn't pale enough, so I'm going to add a little bit more in. 
This ends up actually being my base coat color because it's quite dark compared to the straight tail flesh. So I'm now using this custom mixed color as the shadow color for his face. I'm applying it to the underside of details and sort of the sides, so his cheeks, the side of his head, and then underneath his eyebrows. I'm also adding a little bit above his eyebrows where there would be some creasing in his forehead, just to make the eyebrows stand out more as a facial detail. While I'm at it, I'm going to make sure I paint his hands in the same colors as well. Now I'm moving to the straight pale flesh to start adding highlights. I'm beginning with his hands rather than his face. Here I start highlighting his facial details, the tip of his nose, his upper lip, and so on, before I realize I still have to paint his eyes. Here I base coat his eyeballs using a little bit of Vallejo Ghost White. Ghost White just has a slightly bluish gray tint to it, and it looks a little more natural than a stark white would. For the pupils, I'm using P3 Coal Black. It's not quite black, it has a little bit of a bluish teal tint to it. I do this because at this scale, it's basically impossible to distinguish the pupil from the iris, but by using a slightly off black color, you get the impression that both are there. Once I've painted the eyes, I go back to the skin color and just kind of box them in to make sure they're the right shape. In this case, I'm painting the underside of each of his brow ridges because the eye did kind of bleed up into that area. I'm also repainting his cheeks to make sure the eye didn't bleed down into that area as well. With the shape of the eyes redefined, I have to add some of the highlights back in I did earlier, specifically on his cheeks. I'm also making sure his brows are prominently highlighted. A few more small highlights to bring out his facial details, and that part of the model's done. It's time to move back to detailing his clothing. Here I'm mixing the somber grey from earlier with a little bit of white to get some interim shades.
I'm now using this interim shade to add some highlighting to his different armor sections. This is mostly necessary because the somber gray didn't really let a lot of the value painting show through. Here I've added even more white to the somber gray to get a much brighter highlight. Next I'm hitting a few parts with pure white. I'm being very sparing here because I don't want it to really make areas glow, but I do want a couple sharp highlights. Mostly I'm revisiting areas that had pure white highlights from the value painting and making sure that they get back to that kind of level. I decided that I wanted a little bit brighter blue out of his clothing rather than the grayish blue that they currently have. So I'm going to use a little bit of Vallejo Magic Blue, thinned down as a glaze to just add more saturation to that area. I've thinned this down a fair bit so I hope my value painting shows through. I'm applying it over all the areas I've already tinted with Gilman Blue Glaze earlier. You can see that it is dulling the value painting a little bit. Those white highlights I just added are already not white. That is to be expected though, and I will come back and clean that up shortly. Here again I've made an interim shade by mixing the color I'm using with a little bit of white to get a brighter highlight. Once these blue highlights are done, this miniature is basically ready for the table. Obviously he still needs a base, but the painting's complete at this stage. This was my first real experiment with value painting, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I feel like I got really good results for the amount of time I put in, and if I hadn't been on camera, I probably would have cranked this miniature out in about an hour to this detail. There's also a bit of a learning curve, because obviously some paints work better over the value painting undercoat than others do. I'm going to continue experimenting with value painting in the coming weeks, especially on my live show, so feel free to visit me at twitch.tv slash epicduckstudios on Sunday afternoons and Wednesday nights to see what I'm doing. As always, thanks for watching, and until next time, do something epic.